All right, so you just like me, right? And you just recently got your hands on the Lenovo Legion Go, and you either lost or you just wanted to actually make sure that you have everything updated and set up right out of the gate. Well, in this video right here, man, I'm gonna be showing you guys the first 10 things that I recommend you do before you actually start gaming on this device. And it is vital that you go through every single one of these steps. So watch to the end. All right, so number 10, man, this is a must. And that is making sure that you have updated Windows 11 with every update that is possible possibly available. So in order for you guys to do this, you wanna just swipe up from the bottom or you can just tap on the Windows icon and tap on Windows Update on the left-hand column. And then from there, you wanna tap on Check for Updates button that is in the blue right there. Now, it's gonna go through and it's gonna find any updates that's needed. And if there's any that shows, just go ahead and let it do its thing. So that way you're gonna get the latest Windows as well as security updates that is vital for the success of this product. Also, keep in mind that you might have to also restart your machine a couple of times in order for it to completely run through everything and get it set up right. But after you do that, man, you should be good to go. All right, so number nine is updating your gaming controllers. Yes, you heard that right. Both of the controllers on here, definitely have updates to them too. So in order for you guys to do this, you wanna press on the Lenovo Space uh, button here. That's gonna launch the Lenovo Space application, which is Lenovo's gaming hub. Now, once you guys are in here, you can press the right button up here on the top of the right controller here. And then this is going to bring up the menu option, or you can just tap on the menu button uh, in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, and this is gonna bring up the same menu. Now, once you guys are in here, you wanna tap on the settings icon, then tap on controller, and then you're gonna scroll till you get to controller of firmware update and then from there you just press check for updates now this is going to check for all of the updates on both of these controllers and install them now i'm going to tell you guys this is a must to make sure that you guys have all of your triggers is updated the buttons on all of these controllers because there's a ton of buttons on these controllers as well as it's going to update the trackpad to make sure everything is working like it's supposed to on this system right here as well as even when you guys are using it in fps mode because again it has that button that's right underneath here for you guys to be able to switch that on and off. This is gonna make sure all of that is working correctly. And then also you wanna make sure you kinda of going in here every so often just to make sure that there's no future updates uh, to these controllers. All right, so moving on to number eight, this one right here is somewhat of an advanced thing for you guys to do, but I recommend you guys set up your UMA frame buffer size to whatever you guys actually deem is right for you depending on the type of game that you guys are gonna be playing. But in order for you guys to do this, you will need to go ahead and power down the Lenovo Go first. Now once it's booted all the way down, you're gonna go ahead and press and hold the volume up button and the power button all at the same time. Now once the power button turns red that you can see right here, you're gonna go ahead and let go of the power button but keep pressing the volume up button until the Novo button menu is displayed on this white screen. Now once you guys see the screen, you're gonna go ahead and tap on the BIOS setup. Now this is gonna give you deeper level access into your handheld device here. Now once you're in here, you wanna tap on more settings button on the bottom right hand corner. Now once you're in here, you wanna tap on configuration and then from here, you should see UMA frame buffer size. Now, I personally changed mine to four gigabytes instead of the default three gigabytes that they have it uh, set to. But again, you can set this to whatever you want to. Now, to me, I wish they actually had an auto option uh, as I feel like that would be the best option for it to kind of use what it actually need to when the space is available. But either way, depending on what works best for you, you can set that right here. Then when you guys have it set, you want to go to exit and tap on exit, save and changes, and then tap on yes to make sure everything is safe and it's going to go ahead and restart the machine and then just like that you're good to go again i like to actually see lenovo at least give us an auto option for this one hopefully that's going to be coming in future updates all right so number seven is actually launching the legion space gaming application here without seeing this message that you guys see right up here on the screen literally every freaking time that you press this button is going to ask you do you want to actually allow the app to be able to make these changes to your device so to make sure you never see this right here again, you wanna go ahead and tap on show more details. And then in here, you wanna go ahead and tap on change when these notifications appear. And then you wanna go ahead and slide this all the way down to never notify. And then tap okay. And now when you guys press the Legion Space button on your controller, it's gonna launch way faster and go right into the application. All right, so number six is, now that we actually in this Legion Space application, you wanna 
go ahead and download and log into whatever platform that's going to work best for you in order for you guys to be able to access some of your favorite games to play on this handheld gaming PC. So you want to go ahead and tap on popular gaming platforms here and then you want to go ahead and download the ones that you guys plan on using. So for me, I have Xbox here. I also have my Steam one downloaded, um, but they also have one for Epic Games. If you guys are Fortnite gamers, then I think this is going to be the one you want to download to be able to access that. Then once you guys have everything downloaded, you can go ahead and log into those accounts and get all of your games downloaded that you guys want. Or if you guys are in Game Pass and strong enough Wi-Fi, then you can also play a lot of your games through cloud gaming as well. Now, before we actually get into number five, if you guys found value here in this video so far, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button right now as well as hit that subscribe button as we pushing closer. We are pushing closer, baby, to that 100K sub mark, man. Uh, hopefully, we're trying to get there by the end of this year. Appreciate the support, man. So let's go ahead and get right back to these tips and tricks. All right, so number five here is going to be more so like a personal preference when it comes to setting up your audio because like I said in my full detail review video that's right up here that I have up on the screen that you can watch right after this video here is you definitely want to have something else besides the internal speakers on here because in my opinion they are not the best but here you want to actually pair your favorite pair of gaming headphones or in my case my gaming earbuds which the ones that I use let me grab them real quick the ones that I use here are the Sony Endzone Buds. These things right here are goaded. Absolutely love these things right here. Now, how this actually works is if you guys pick up a pair, uh, it comes with this dongle right here. Now, if you guys have a PS5 or some type of gaming console, then you can just switch it to PS5 or even on your mobile phone, or you can switch this little switch to PC. And then from there, I can plug this right into the bottom using the USB-C here at the bottom, or I can plug it into the top either way. And then I can just boom, put that right in there. And then from there, I can just go through the normal Bluetooth settings and then pair it up. And then just like that, now I can use my gaming earbuds, the Sony Endzone Buds, which again, these are my go-tos for gaming. And then from there, I can just pair these up with that. Now as a bonus, let's say you guys out there, you're like, well, CK, I don't really want to use like headphones or anything like that. I just want to, I just want to use the internal speakers. Now, shout out to all of y'all in my previous video comments. You guys mentioned about me downloading an app called FX Sound. And when I tell you, after tweaking some of the audio EQ settings on this device right here, that application made this device sound way better than it did coming right out of the box. So I highly recommend you guys download FX Sound uh, to this device and you can get it in the Microsoft Store um, and it's free and it is, it, it is really good, y'all. All right, so number four is understanding when the updated drivers are actually available to this device, where to actually go for you guys to be able to update this uh, on this handheld PC. All right, so in order for you guys to do this, you wanna go ahead and press on the quick settings button here on the uh, right-hand controller here. Then you wanna go ahead and tap on the question mark icon there, and then you wanna tap on online support. Now this is gonna pop up a Lenovo web page here. Now once you guys are on this page here, you wanna tap on PC once, and then you're gonna get the option to be able to select detect product. Now since I got mine already updated here, it's gonna bypass this, but on yours, it's gonna pop up a prompt to install the Lenovo service bridge. But notice it will fail the first time, but after it fails, you wanna go ahead and tap on the link labeled here in the bottom right hand corner to be able to install the Lenovo service bridge to your console. Then after all of that is done and installed, you want to go ahead and go through all of those prompts. It's going to load up the product homepage that you guys see right here. And then on this page right here, I can just scroll right here. And on the right hand side, you're going to see drivers and software. You want to tap on that. And then in here is going to load up the drivers and software page. And then you want to tap on scan now under automatic update. And then you want to just go ahead and tap on start scan. And then from here, it's going to use the Lenovo service bridge. And it's going to try to pull in whatever new drivers that are put to this device for you guys to be able to update them. Now, right now, at the time of filming this video, the AMD uh, drivers are not available at the time of this video right now, but supposedly there are gonna be some updates coming on November 10th, and then there's also gonna be more updates coming uh, two to three weeks after that update. So hopefully, we should be able to update the drivers on here uh, because that is gonna be crucial to a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the graphics performance in certain games. So when this option is available for us to be able to download the latest drivers when Lenovo and AMD finally get it together and they give us the updates for it, this is where you're gonna be able to go to do that. So if you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> All right, so number three is a good tip for you guys to know, and that is switching between the different thermal modes. Now, right now, if I go ahead and tap on the quick settings option, and if I go down to the performance tab, I can go ahead and switch between the different thermal modes or the TDP modes, right? Now, 
I don't really like doing that because a lot of times whenever you guys are inside of a game, uh, it's going to kind of break into the game and could potentially mess things up. So the best way to do this is if you guys press and hold on the space button here on the top and then just tap on Y. And you're going to see this uh, icon right here actually change to different colors. Now, when it comes to the white mode, this one here is going to be auto mode, red is for performance mode, purple is balance mode, and the blue is quiet mode. Now, this is just a quick shortcut for you guys to be able to stay in the game and switch through the different performances without having to leave the game and go back into it and could potentially mess up your whole game flow. All right, so number two is something that I would say, and that is to customize your controller buttons. Now, I'm not going to go too heavy and deep into this because customizing controller is all based on your own personal preference, but I'm going to show you guys exactly where you're going to need to go in order to do that. So in the space app here, you want to go ahead and go to the settings here on the bottom left-hand corner, and then you want to go ahead and tap on controller, and then in here you want to go to button button mapping profile um, and then here you want to be able to tap on view and then you can see what the current button options are selected for this and if you want to go to rear view this is where you're going to be able to change those different settings so I can tap on the one for the Y1 button and I can change this to whatever I want it to be I can tap on the Y2 button and change this to whatever I want it to be the same for the M2 and M3 buttons as well as well as the Y3 button here on the left hand side so you do get the option to be able to change a lot of this if you want to or I can go here and disable the trackpad or enable it and then I can also go in here and select the Y1 button and I can change all of those mappings right here as well from Y through Y1 through 3 as well as the M2 and M3 button so with that being said, man, this is where you're going to be able to go, and I highly, highly recommend you guys do this, especially if you guys are going to be using it in the FPS mode, because I'm telling you right now, all of the buttons are going to be off when you first go into that FPS mode, and it is going to be crucial in order for you guys to be able to game using that mode. And the number one thing is when you guys have your system turned off, and that is getting your charging levels. Now, this is kind of a weird thing that I'm not sure why they didn't just use the colors around either the joysticks uh, to go from either red or red or orange or to white or to green when it's actually fully charged or just use the lights that's right up here on the top of the power button in order for you guys to be able to see kind of like when it's fully charged up. But in order for you guys to be able to see this, you must unplug it and then replug the charger back into it in order for you guys to be able to see your battery percentage. Now this is something they don't really tell you, but it is the only way to be able to see what your battery percentage is when it is actually turned off and charging up. Again, I wish they would have just, just used the color indicators right here and just made them to like a white to green or a red to green or something something like that in order for us to be able to see it. But nonetheless, that's the workaround. But that's pretty much it, guys, man. I do have some more that I do plan on listening to follow up video. Let me know down in the comment section below which one of these features that you didn't even know about or what are some of the ones that you did know about that I didn't mention in this video that you can let everybody know down in the comments. Be honest, we all learning here, man. We in this community together. Again, don't forget to hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel because 100K C Kid, man, is almost here. And with y'all help with watching this video here and subbing to the channel, I know we can get there by the end of this year which is the goal y'all so either way man appreciate you guys watching see you in the next one squad we out <laughs>